My feminist boss told me that I didn't deserve my paycheck. So I sued her and now she's begging for forgiveness. Ever since I began working at this company, my boss has been tormenting me. She purposefully gives me more work than I am supposed to do, and then gets mad when I can't complete it. She would talk to me like I was her assistant, telling me to go get her coffee. I would obviously refuse to do as she said, but then they would threaten to report me for insubordination. At the time, I was too scared to call her bluff and just went along with her whims. But she took that as a challenge and kept pushing my boundaries. This one time, the entire office floor was going on a field trip to one of my dream destinations. But literally one day before we were meant to leave, my boss cancelled my invite. She said, you have too much work that you need to do, so I have decided that you can't go on the trip. The work she mentioned was a project that I wasn't even supposed to work on in the first place. But she made sure to wait until the last possible moment to tell me so I couldn't fight it. Now, while my life at this company was terrible because of her, I was actually being paid a lot. I decided that once I saved up enough money to not worry about living paycheck to paycheck, I would start looking for another, peaceful job. But before I could do that, she went way too far. At the end of September, I noticed that I hadn't received my salary even after a whole week of waiting. So I texted my boss, asking what was going on. Her response left me in absolute shock. Apparently, I wasn't going to receive my paycheck for December because she found my work below her standard. I told her that I worked harder than ever and my numbers were off the charts. And even if they weren't, that wasn't a reason to cut my pay without even telling me. She didn't take that well at all, and began going on a rant. You need to watch your attitude. I told you that you aren't getting paid, and. That's final. You're probably one of those men are better fanatics anyway, right? You don't like the fact that your boss is a female, and that's why you're crying so much. Well, too bad you just need to deal with it. I was appalled to see what she had been thinking all this time. She was hiding resentment behind all that bullying, and now she was even trying to deceive me out of my pay. Well, I was no longer going to put up with her ridiculous behavior. Thankfully, that conversation was over text, so I had undeniable proof. I immediately contacted a lawyer and told him about the situation. He was adamant on suing the company, because in his opinion, this was a very clear case of workplace harassment and discrimination. I agreed because there was another aspect to this lawsuit. You see, my company cared more about their reputation than anything else. And a harassment lawsuit would be a stain on their resume that they definitely didn't want. So they called me in for a meeting to settle the lawsuit immediately. They informed me that they were willing to fire my boss, as well as give me 10 times my salary as a settlement bonus if I agreed to drop the case. They also said that because of my performance, I was being promoted to the position held by the person who had denied me my paycheck. I decided that that was more than enough for revenge, and agreed. However, a few days later, I received a bunch of calls and texts from my former boss. Apparently, she had been told that she can be rehired in a starting level position if I forgave her on paper. She was literally begging me to forgive her, because she had blown through her savings and needed a job to pay her rent. The only reason I am considering forgiving her, is because I would then be her boss, and can get payback on everything she did. My entitled miracle child sister sold her baby. My sister was a miracle baby and has been entitled since day one. Some time ago my sister gave birth to a baby boy. The boy was a miracle himself, as she tried to use a hanger to terminate herself but he somehow lived. My sister only allowed our parents to come to the hospital to meet their grandchild at the birth. They had to take a last-minute flight to LA just to be there. My sister also forbade me from going. She said I'd ruined her life enough, she wished she was an only child, wished me dead, all stuff like that in repetition. And she doesn't want me anywhere near her ever again. Well the feeling is mutual. I haven't ever forgiven her for unaliving my dog in 8th grade. She did it in a brutal way. Stuck it in a furnace. I actually hospitalized her over this and we have totally hated each other since that day. However, three months before the birth my sister showed back up again. This time she pleaded with our parents to let her in to talk, and not to contact me that time because she really didn't want me there. She only had one day before she had to head back to LA, and had driven through the night. I wasn't there to see it. But the details I got from my parents, my sister went crying to mom and begging her to take her back into the family. My dad said that mom hardly wanted to look at her. Dad confronted my sister and said that she didn't bother to try and contact them in years. And that she was only back and even pregnant because it was all about the money to her. Mom spoke up and told her that she hoped for so long that my sister would come home to visit, or even just talk to her. But it was years of no contact. She'd done everything for her, she'd favored her, she'd defended her lies, she'd made sure she didn't get a felony in court. And yet my sister showed zero appreciation. Dad backed this up too, and even compared me to her. And how I at least appreciated my parents. Then he blurted out that I'd been made a legal partner in the business he is having me manage, and that I'm on track to eventually take his place one day. After that my sister I'm told went hysterical and was screaming about how it wasn't fair, and it should be her instead. Somehow she was still allowed to spend the night in her old room. And the next morning she dropped this bomb on my parents. I heard her emotion was just gone. I guess she didn't feel the need to keep up the act anymore. She said that she'd allow mom and dad to adopt her child, in exchange for a house in Cali and an undisclosed sum of money that I'm not privy to. And you know what, my parents agreed. But my dad had demands of his own. In return for the adoption of my nephew, my sister gave up any and all rights to her son, 
signed a contract stating that she will have no part of the family ever again, and changed her legal name. That last part really surprised me. Dad went so far as to pay for her name to be changed in order to separate her from the family. This meant getting all of her information reissued. Such as her diploma, college degree, passport and anything else that ever had her name on it. All paid for by my parents. And as part of the agreement, my sister could never change her name back, or even to something similar. My parents didn't cookie-cut anything in this endeavor. My participation in it though was minimal at best. My parents went to California to purchase a house my sister approved of. But she would not be given the house until after the baby was born and in their hands. She was very unhappy about this, as she wanted to move into the house after she'd signed the contract. But our parents had none of it. They gave my sister a week to sign, and she signed in front of a lawyer in less than 48 hours. So as of then, I'm now considered an only child. I'm not gonna say I'm happy about that. I used to love my sister before she became a narcissist. But what's done is done. And I'm over it. My parents also tracked down the baby's biological father to get him to relinquish his parental rights as well. My sister found out he went back to his hometown in Arizona after he abandoned her, and my parents went to see him before the baby was born. He had no problem signing away paternal his rights after a DNA test confirmed he was the father. He must have still been in cahoots with my sister, because he also also wanted a house and a payout as compensation to sign away his rights. Though not nearly as much I'm told. My parents purchased him a cheap house somewhere and paid him off. Well I say cheap in comparison to the house they bought for my sister in LA. This was one expensive baby to adopt. But as my dad said it's worth every cent to make sure my grandson has a future. My dad sold one of his smaller businesses to a competitor in order to get the money together without really affecting his other finances. Said competitor had been making him offers for years, and my dad wasn't that involved with the business anymore. So he finally took the offer, but only if they retained all of the employees already there, which they did. And now it's their name on the sign. But my parents didn't care because they fully adopted my nephew. When the child was born, my sister didn't even want to hold him. And I heard even once referred to the baby as that thing, which was beyond cruel. She even admitted she was planning to sell the baby in a closed adoption to someone else, had our parents not agreed to do it themselves. She got her house, and got her money. And then promptly cut contact all over again. So she's gone from our lives for good, and no longer related to us. I have been having an affair with my hot stepfather for years. But I just realized that he groomed me and I don't know what to do. My stepfather married my mom when I was just 7 years old, so he has been in my life forever. I remember how he used to take me on playdates when my mom was busy working. He would buy me toys and clothes, and even ask me to do a fashion show for him where I wore all the clothes I liked. Whenever I had to go to a school or sports event, he would insist on driving me instead of my mom. My mom had always been too busy to pay attention to me when she was single, so I was really happy to finally get a parent who cared about me. We would often fall asleep in each other's arms while watching movies at night. He even bought me a brand new phone with his contact information already in it. At the time, I was just a little, spoiled girl who didn't realize what he was doing. He would always accompany me while doing chores like cleaning and washing dishes, and he would get really handsy. When I reached 15 years old, I began thinking that my stepfather was a very attractive man. Whenever we went out, if I left him alone then he would get approached by at least one girl asking if he was single. My friends would always comment on how handsome he was whenever I showed them his pictures. So I began feeling proud that he was my stepdad and not theirs, and even became a little possessive of him. Ever since I began thinking that, our relationship got a lot more intimate. If my mom wasn't home, we would sit in the same room and talk all day long. He would even hold my hand sometimes when I was having trouble at school. He also gave me a lot of compliments, calling me beautiful and that he wished he was my age. That being said, I never thought that our relationship would be anything more than that of a father and daughter, until I turned 18. He went all out for my 18th birthday and bought me a brand new car. He made jokes like I no longer needed him since I was now an adult, so I ended up comforting him by saying I would always need him. Little did I know, I should have never said that. A few weeks after that, my mom was out of town for a business trip and I was home alone with my stepdad. Before leaving, I had a huge argument with her where she called me spoiled and entitled, so I wasn't in a good mood. I had also been wanting to buy some new clothes for a while, so I decided to go into his room and ask him if we could go shopping. But as soon as he laid his eyes on me, he started flirting with me. He told me to sit near him on the bed, and pulled me into his arms. He began telling me how angry he was when my mother was yelling at me, and that he loved me way more than her. He talked about what I had said on my birthday, and asked if I needed him right now. I wasn't a child anymore, and knew exactly what he was doing. He was making a move on me. He was married to my mother so this was incredibly inappropriate, and I should have ran out immediately. But I was so angry at my mother that I wasn't thinking straight, and just wanted to get back at her. So I responded to his flirty advances and didn't resist when he began kissing me. That was the night when I had intimacy for the first time in my life, and it was with my stepfather. Afterwards, I didn't feel guilty at all and instead felt a satisfaction that I had never felt before. 
I was already thinking about doing it again the next time my mother would yell at me. The tension between me and my stepdad increased a lot, and he became even more touchy with me. He would constantly seek physical contact with me even outside of intimacy, and say that he is recharging his battery. When my mom returned, he argued with her to give me more freedom since I was an adult. To my surprise, she agreed but also said if I wanted more freedom, then I should move out. My stepdad quickly shut that down however, by claiming that it was his house and I was welcome to live in it for as long as I wanted. I was really happy he said that, and thus our relationship continued. Whenever mom wasn't home, me and stepdad would hook up in my room. We would even drop hints that we wanted to do it when my mom was at home, and almost got caught at times. I began avoiding all other boys besides him, thinking that he was all I needed. But when I turned 21, everything changed. I often watched documentaries with my friends, and they said that watching one about a criminal would be a great way to celebrate my birthday. So we did exactly that. The problem is, this documentary was about a man who had groomed his daughter. As soon as I heard the title, a shiver ran down my spine. Thankfully, my curiosity got the better of me and I ended up watching it. In the documentary, this guy had married the girl's mother when she was just 5 years old, and slept with her when she was 15. He isolated her from the world and made her think that he was the only one who cared about her. Halfway through, I was sure that my situation was just like the girl in the documentary, except the isolation part. It was terrifying how I never even realized that I was being groomed by my stepdad. All those gifts when I was younger, all those compliments, all those times we hung out with just the two of us, he was planning on sleeping with me from the start. The reality of what he had done, and the fact that I had actually helped him in cheating on my mother, it hit me all at once. I just couldn't watch anymore and ran out, ignoring my friends who were asking what was wrong. I came home and shut myself in my room, and haven't left ever since. I don't know what to do. My heart hasn't stopped beating loudly and I am so scared. I no longer want to be with him. But I have nowhere to go. I don't have enough money to get my own place. And even if I run, I'm pretty sure that he will follow me and bring me back. My sister is having her dream wedding in a month. She won't invite me if I bring my boyfriend of five years. I met my boyfriend five years ago and we started dating. He is super close and loving with my family and was there for my family's special occasions. My sister has been with her fiancé for two years and engaged for six months. She is the type of girl who has dreamed of getting married since she was a little girl. It didn't matter who proposed she just wanted to be married. In the beginning of her relationship she tricked me into going on a double date with her fiancé and his brother. She had said it was dinner with her and a friend, and it was most definitely not. The brother kept making very inappropriate passes at me the whole time and I told him I had a boyfriend and the whole situation made me uncomfortable. At dinner, while I was going to the bathroom, fiancé's brother followed me and tried to touch me. I told my sister but she sided with her fiancé's brother and didn't believe me. At their engagement party my boyfriend noticed that the brother wouldn't stop staring at me and we tried our best to avoid him. Every time I have seen this guy he has been weird towards me. My sister wanted me, my twin, and two brothers at her wedding. The wedding is supposed to be next month in the beginning of May. My sister just told me that I'm going to be walking down the aisle with her fiancé's brother. I told her that he makes me uncomfortable and he touched me. I said that I thought I would be walking with my own brother. Apparently this is something her fiancé is insisting on and she wants to make him happy. Seems like a pretty weird thing to insist, and I know it's some scheme between the two brothers. My other siblings also thought it was weird and voiced their objections to our sister. She got upset and said this is her wedding and she'll do what she wants. I told my boyfriend this and he was upset for me. He's confident enough in himself that he knows this guy would never be competition, but he knows how uncomfortable I am with this situation. The other day we had family dinner at my mom's house. I took this as an opportunity to bring up the ah situation with my mother around. I refrained from mentioning the touching as that was a while ago, besides I have already told my sister and hinted at it to my parents, but nothing was ever done. I just talked about the ah situation. My sister got extremely upset and started crying saying I was trying to ruin her marriage. I was so confused, as was everyone else, and tried to explain that he makes me and my boyfriend extremely uncomfortable. She then said that I can't bring my boyfriend to her wedding anymore and if I do then I'm no longer a bridesmaid. She gave no reason as to why I can't bring him and my siblings were just as upset considering they like my boyfriend a lot better than my sister's fiancé. I thought I would give her a few days to calm down and rethink but she has not changed her mind. My 19-year-old brother's girlfriend is still invited to the wedding. My boyfriend is an incredible guy and has been nothing but kind and generous to my sister. His feelings are hurt but he still wants me to go to the wedding. I think my sister is being an unreasonable a-hole and I will be pretty pissed off at the wedding if my life partner is not there with me. I don't know what to do and my family is no help either. I'm dating my sister's bully, but I think my sister is blowing it out of proportion. My younger sister Anne, had a bully in high school named Andrea. It started off as mostly name-calling, and then became physical. My sister would come home with bruises sometimes, and the school did nothing about it. I always supported and through it. By the time they got out of high school I still absolutely hated Andrea. Then two years ago I met her at a local cafe where she started working. She ended up apologizing to me for how she treated my sister. 
She'd been wanting to apologize to Anne but she had no way of contacting her. I still kept my guard up when I saw her after that, but I felt like she'd really matured since high school and told my sister about her. Anne wasn't interested in any apologies, which I get, but I decided to try convince Anne that Andrea has changed and maybe they could even be friends. I kept talking to Andrea and she asked me out on a date after a few months. I figured my sister would be happy for me, regardless of her and Andrea's past. Either way, I never told Anne. Our first date went really well and I was falling more and more for her. She's everything I would ever want from a girl and is no longer a bully. Throughout that time I kept our relationship a secret from Anne and our family, aside from dropping little hints that Andrea's changed. The only people who knew were our closest friends. Then when I was confident I really wanted to be with Andrea, I told my parents first, who were shocked but were willing to meet her, then and who told me she'd disown me if I brought Andrea home. I didn't take her seriously since I did so much for her and thought she could put her feelings aside just this one time. We set up a date for Andrea to meet my family and aside from and not showing up it went really well and my parents warmed up to her. So everything was going well until one day and went off on me, said some truly awful things and threatened to go no contact. With me and my parents if I didn't break up with Andrea and they kept her out of our house. No matter how much I begged her to give Andrea a chance she kept bashing my relationship. Our parents took her side and I had enough of the BS so I told them they could accept my relationship or I'd distance myself from them. Mom took the first option and my dad and then took the second. I don't see or talk to Anne anymore, barely see my dad and my mom's constantly heartbroken that our family will never be whole again, all because Anne is too selfish to accept that people can change. F Anna, I really don't need her, I have Andrea. My selfish boss stabbed me in the back and cut my pay. So I got his store shut down and now he's out of a job. I began working at this place over a year ago. My starting salary was way below my skill set and experience, but I agreed to it for a very specific reason. I was promised that if my performance was past a certain threshold, then I would receive a massive bonus after six months as well as an increase in pay. I believed in myself and knew that I could perform well, so I took that risk. I did overtime practically every day, and even worked 15 hours on some busy days. I would jump on every project and do my best to contribute to the team. I didn't take a single holiday or go on a vacation in those first six months, because I was working towards the goal. I wanted to impress them so much that they would be more than happy to give me my bonus. Leading up to that day, my boss was motivating me to do well, as well as praising me for my work so far. I was scheduled to have a meeting with him where he would hand me the check. But as soon as I walked into his office, I knew something was wrong. He started off by saying that he was satisfied with my performance, and showed me my analytics. I was surprised because my performance was higher than all other employees, making it clear that I had put in the most effort. Let's put it this way, they knew me as the guy that would pack 200 bags in 6 months when they only asked me to pack 50. I was sure that I was about to be rewarded, but then he gave me the worst news of my life. Apparently, since the company was going through a rough spot, they couldn't afford my bonus right now. It was unilaterally decided that I wouldn't get my bonus until one year had passed, meaning I had to wait another 6 months. Also, remember that raise that I was assured would happen? They raised my salary by a massive total of 2%. It was as ridiculous as it sounds. I told my boss that this was literal betrayal, and they were going back on their word. But. He said there's nothing he can do as it has already been decided. I tried arguing, but he was very dismissive and basically told me to keep working hard and wait for the one-year mark. At that moment, I realized that these guys were trying to deceive me into working for chump change. I knew that the promise about giving me my bonus at the one-year mark was also another lie, so I immediately began looking for another job. I also stopped putting any real effort into my job except the bare minimum. Clients were complaining to my boss that their work was no longer being done on time. But he knew that the reason for this was his own empty promises. As we approached the yearly mark, the corporate office caught wind of my massive drop in efficiency, and called me to ask what was going on. I saw my chance and told them the entire truth. About how I was lied to about my employment benefits and that they were underpaying me by a landslide. I had also secured another job by that point, so I handed in my resignation letter in that meeting itself. It turns out that this scheme was a shady operation by my boss and another manager, and the higher executives didn't have any idea about it. They were really mad. First they decided to give me my six-month bonus as an apology and asked me to not leave with a bad impression of their company. Then, they decided to close down the branch that I had worked at, and put my boss out of a job. But that wasn't the end of it. Apparently, he was also involved in some tax evasion stuff and the corporate office reported him to the IRS, so now he may end up in jail. To think that none of this would have happened if he just paid me what he promised. My crazy brother allowed his own daughter to be molested. When I found out, I ran away with her and cut all contact. I have always had a close relationship with my niece. She is the sweetest girl ever and calls me her favorite aunt, even though I'm her only aunt. Her mom passed away during childbirth so it was hard for my brother to raise her alone. As a result, I would often take care of her while he was busy. I would take her to movies, restaurants, and even go to her school as her guardian. I loved her a lot and didn't mind doing all that for her. I was actually unable to have kids with my husband, and it felt like she was filling an empty void in my heart. I knew it wasn't fair to my brother, but sometimes I treated her like she was the daughter I never had. I would tell her about girls only nights, and we would fall asleep together while eating chips. Whenever I bought her a cake and a present for her birthday, she would always be so excited that the entire house would light up. She would make sure to keep thanking me for weeks after that. Last year was the same, but I noticed something odd this year. 
She recently celebrated her 12th birthday at my house, and I noticed that she wasn't as happy as I expected. I tried asking my brother, in other words her, if something was wrong, but he didn't answer my question. The only guests were family, but I didn't want to make a scene. So I decided to take my niece away from all the noise and ask if she was all right in private. I took her up to the room that she stayed in whenever she would come over. But as soon as I asked her what was wrong, she just started crying. She was hugging me so hard that I almost started panicking. I had never seen her cry before this, and wondered exactly what was bothering her. But she didn't stop crying for several minutes. I told her that I love her, and am always here for her, so she can tell me everything. She somehow found the courage to tell me the truth, and I couldn't believe it. It turns out, a teacher at her school had taken her away into an abandoned classroom, and touched her inappropriately over her clothes. When she told this to her dad, he brushed it off like it was nothing. But she was obviously very uncomfortable, so she kept pressing him to do something about it. And my idiot brother had gotten angry at her, told her to shut up and never tell anyone about what happened. I was literally in shock and kept hugging my niece close to my chest, because I didn't want to break down crying in front of her. The first thing I did was put some headphones on her with some calming music, and told her that she could play on my iPad. Then I desperately called my husband upstairs and told him about the situation. I was furious at the school and even more so at my brother, but I didn't know how to handle the situation. But it turns out, my husband was even more furious than I was. He rushed down and punched my brother right in the face. And in front of the entire family, including my parents, he screamed, you dare let your own daughter be molested at school, and did nothing? I thought my brother would make up some excuse, and he did exactly that. He said, oh for Christ's sake, stop bothering me. That girl took my wife away from me, so everything she says is invalid in my opinion. She is probably lying about that incident anyway. And even if she isn't, I don't care. For a few seconds, everyone in the house was silent. I was praying that my niece still had the headphones on, and didn't listen to her own father say that. My dad quickly discerned what the situation was about, and supported my husband by kicking my brother out with force. A lot of relatives couldn't bear the uncomfortable situation, and made some excuse to leave. After that, I couldn't take it anymore either and just broke down. I never thought that my brother was hiding such resentment about the passing of his wife, and blaming an innocent girl in the process. What would he have done had she not gained the courage to tell me the truth? Would he have let that particular teacher continue his wrongdoings? Just the thought alone makes me want to puke. But I knew I had to stand up and put a stop to this. I sat down with my parents and my husband to talk about how to handle everything. The first thing we decided was that my dad would go to the school and make sure that teacher got fired or arrested. I trust him, so I am leaving that part to him. Then comes the question of whether we should let my niece go back to her father. But with the way that he reacted, I honestly didn't want to let him near her ever again. Thankfully, my husband and I were planning to move to a different state because he would get a higher paying job. The only reason I hadn't said yes was because I didn't want to get separated from my niece. But this was the perfect opportunity. We decided that we were going to move, and simply take our niece with us. We live in a country where there is no such thing as a child protective services, so this wasn't going to be that hard. But I needed to make sure that my niece wanted this. I went back upstairs, and very gently asked her if she wanted to come with us even if it meant not seeing her father again. I can't count how many times she said yes. My brother had been ignoring her at home, and in her mind, we were her true parents anyway. I'm a bit ashamed to say that I was actually glad this happened, because now I could be with her every day and protect her. For the next few days, we sorted all loose ends and kept avoiding my brother. My niece was staying with us since we could just buy her new clothes and toys. My dad as he said he would, and got that teacher fired from the school and even his teaching license was revoked. We had to inform the principal that we were taking her to a different state, and he wrote a recommendation letter for us that would help her start in a new school right away. As the days went by, my niece became more and more happier because she didn't have to see her father or that teacher ever again. Now, we have been living in this new house for nearly a month, and things are better than ever. I have blocked my brother and have had no contact with him after that day. I'm sure he's asking my parents about the whereabouts of his daughter, but they aren't going to tell him. I don't regret doing this, because he's the one who started all this. If he wasn't a spineless father who blames an innocent soul, he wouldn't have lost a daughter. I just had a baby with the wrong woman. Jess and I have been together for three years and now we've started to think about having a baby. She said it was her lifelong dream to be a mother and wanted to be able to be a stay-at-home mom for at least two years before working again. I obliged because who was I to deny my wife's wishes? So we tried for a baby, and tried, and tried. We didn't know what was wrong, but I could see it was taking a toll on Jess's mental health. She believed there was something wrong with her, that maybe she was infertile. So we both got tests done to see what the problem was. Except, there was nothing wrong with either of our bodies. This gave Jess new hope and she insisted we try more frequently. There wasn't a day where we didn't try. Now as a man, I know I should be happy to be having intimacy this much, but holding Jess during aftercare every single time made me realize I didn't want this at all. I wasn't ready to be a father. Kids are so much responsibility and because Jess wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, that meant I had to work extra hard to provide for three people. 
baby things are not cheap in the slightest, and there were so many things I wanted to do with Jess before we did something with this level of commitment. She always talked about seeing the seven wonders of the world and I always wanted to take her to do that. But this baby puts a halt in those plans. Because I didn't really want to hide in anybody that I knew about these things, I hired a therapist. So for three days every week after work, I would go talk to my therapist. She was this woman who carried herself with confidence and I knew she contained so much wisdom in that head of hers. She was only a few years older than me too, so it really impressed me that she could give me all this advice that would help me improve my life. So, after beating around the bush for a week, my therapist told me to just spill it. She knew I was holding something back, the real reason I didn't want this baby. It wasn't the expenses, or the long work hours. No, it went much deeper than that. She wanted to dissect my brain piece by piece and inspect it in a way that would make her understand all my thoughts. I allowed her, of course, because this is what I was paying her to do. Some advice she gave me was to just stop and look. Stop and listen to the world around me. Don't move too quickly or else I might miss the bane of my existence. So I did just that. Whenever I was in a crowded place or I was feeling overwhelmed, I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and listened. I did this several times, and each time, it brought a smile to my face. I felt at ease because I would always see this woman. She had long black hair, a diamond-shaped face, and eyes so brown they resembled the dark void I always found myself in. Just seeing her smile melted my heart, hell it could have the ability to melt any cold heart out there. Seeing her was like seeing art displayed in a museum where you're so captivated by it you just stop and stare to admire every single perfection and every little flaw. Seeing her so often made me realize this mysterious woman wasn't so mysterious. Because she had black hair and a diamond face, I chalked it up to it being Jess. But upon closer inspection, I realized it was actually my ex Rachel. I panicked, but when that happened, I was told to stop and look, but that would mean I had to see Rachel, which would cause me to panic. It was a loop cycle. At my next appointment, I told my therapist of my dilemma and she said that's why I can't have this baby with Jess. I'm still attached to Rachel. That's when I realized I wasn't over Rachel as I thought I was, because whenever I looked at anything, I would get random flashes of Rachel with the exact thing I was looking at. I dreaded going home now, wondering what would cause me to slip up, or if I had to tell Jess about it. I never could, not when she was so happy that she was ovulating and we had intimacy, which resulted in her finally getting the baby she wanted. For nine months, I would have to keep this secret to myself because there was just no way I would tell a pregnant Jess that I was thinking about another woman when we were getting ready to be a family. The guilt never subsided as the months went on, and everything got worse eight months in. I had decided to skip my therapy session after work one day. I was still in therapy because I needed someone to tell my problems to, since Jess wasn't an option not just because I didn't want to see how she would react, but because she was pregnant and had to deal with her own problems. So, I go to a random bar nowhere near where I live, hoping that an ice drink would help me clear my thoughts. Except when I went up to the bartender, I think I stopped to listen because the woman's face from before appeared in front of me. There was that same warm smile and eyes that were the windows to my soul, leaving me entranced. There was something different this time, though. This time, she spoke. Hi, how can I help you? She asked. I blinked, and realized I was actually face to face with Rachel. I kind of stared at her like a fish out of water and she laughed. Don't be so surprised to see me Ben, she said. There was no doubt about it. That was Rachel, as I live and breathe. My Rachel. I apologized and ordered my drink. It was a slow night at the bar, so she took the opportunity to sit with me and talk. We reminisced about our time together and talked about what our lives look like now. She's single, but living with her best friend in an apartment she was more than happy to give me the address to. She was radiating and refreshing to see. It wasn't until I blabbed that my wife was having a baby that she suddenly needed to get back to work. I felt dumb for mentioning that, as it ruined our conversation, but I took it as a sign to go home to my wife. I tried my best not to visit Rachel after finding out where she worked, but I didn't try hard enough and I found myself skipping my therapy sessions to be with her. Eventually, we exchanged phone numbers, but I tried not to text her too often because I knew my wife wasn't going to be happy about it. A month later, my wife gave birth, but I wasn't experiencing the joys and miracles of childbirth. Instead, doubt lied deep in me and a bundle of anxiety kept creeping in my stomach. This wasn't right, none of it. The baby was then put into one of those little beds with all their identification on it. Something took over me at that moment and I found myself snapping a picture of the baby. Then I did something stupid. I went to Rachel's contact and sent her the picture along with the message, it should have been you. 